Hey guys, this is iTune. Welcome to episode 8 of my Let's Play series. Today I will be solving our lava issues once and for all. I went to IRC for help and Muggs came up with a solution which you will be seeing in this episode. I prepared a couple of materials in advance. Hopefully you will get me where I want to without me needing to go to any chests but I highly doubt that. Alright first... Uh, or do you need him for some reason? Jaded would like a skeleton spawner from me. I'm just gonna go pass it over to her. I mean, my guess is that eventually, if we get tier five, they'll probably go into a community mob farm. Yeah, hang on. I'm I'm on the way. I need to put something there first, so it's easier for me to bring it there. Oh, what? You're gonna just bring it with like a portal gun or something? Yeah, I got gravity gun. So, oh. um, you have any great space where I could put it? Because I can't um, use I can't use books. I gotta use portals. Yeah, there's some space at the top of my mob tower over here. Um, me no has jetpack. Okay, I will just bring the soul shard over there and you can plop him down in the center of my room. Eh? No, I'm... It's a vanilla of skeleton spawner. Are you gonna put it in there? Yeah. I'm going to make the the uh, soul shard spawner even more powerful. She's just going to eat the spawner with the soul shard. Yes. You go. If that's okay. So I got the proof. Yeah, hang on. If the goal is to get as many skelly spawners in the trapped in this soul spawner as possible, so that. He can be controlled with redstone, and he'll just drop skellies down my mob trap. And you could just uh, kill the skeletons, right? <laughs> sure, yeah. if I wanted to kill a thousand twenty-four by hand. No, you don't have to kill a thousand twenty-four by hand. You only have to kill a fifth of that. Yeah, if I had that enchant on my sword, which I don't. I have three of those. <laughs> the what? The the enchant on your sword? Yeah. Oh, well, that's no fair. Oh. I will just cry. Took a long time to get it though. I keep dying as soon as I get close to enough um, enchanting level to do that. Yeah. Uh, wherever you want this. Oh, just stick it right there. I'm just gonna suck him up in the spawner. Just plop him down. Wait, you sure you can pop it down here where he just like spawn all over the place? It might no, be because bad. I'm gonna. No, he's going to disappear in two seconds and be sucked up into this thing. Okay. Behind you. Be watch. Behind. I still want to make a creeper spawner though. Mm. So how, how much did that help then with the soul shot? He is now almost a tier 5. Oh, he is okay. now, I take him over here to my handy mob tower. Which you don't have to fly to get to the part that actually spits out stuff. You just have to fly to get to the part that, you know, actually gets the spawner. And I'm going to put the spawner back here near the top. And yeah, right there. Uh huh. And hey, hey, back up there. Up, up, up. Yes. Yeah. The jetpack. No real hover mode. I can't really see anything from here. Uh, because you're on the bottom. Because I'm. I don't have a jetpack. It's okay. Yeah. If you stand at the bottom of the mob tower here, you'll see what's happening in just a sec. Do you have steps to get back up here? Yeah, there's stairs to get back up to the top of that. Or there's a jetpack in the generator there on the floor. Pull it out. Right next to the books, there's a generator. There's yeah, a jetpack in there you can borrow. Kind of too late. I was already like halfway running here. Oh, okay. So uh, I put the proven frames in the chest. Okay. On what do you do with the no, mob no. tower? Oh, okay. Wait, you just spawn it and it... Yeah, they drop down in here. See? Sorry, that was an accident. Didn't mean to place that. See, and... I need like a few more kills or one more spawner. And I won't have to stand up here in my little hidey hole anymore to make them spawn. Okay. But I'll... they drop down, they die, they get sucked in, they make bones, the bones get By yanked the way, out, um, etc. One thing, don't place the spawner 
in something because it would lose everything. Uh, it lose it would lose the progress in the current tier. Oh, so if I if in if you put it in now, then you will waste everything. Up. So you have to do another full set of kills for that tier. No, I don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I had happened with my sheep, <coughs> or with my chicken spawner. Yeah. Well, oops. Oh well. All right, back to my own base then. You know where to find yeah, me. Yeah. See now, th now the, uh, the 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 skellies are just gonna fall down. They're gonna die. They get sucked up. I chop their bones up and put them on the farm. <laughs> what? Seems fair enough. Alright, first of all, I would need a liquid transport. Oh no, Mr. Creeper. I don't think so. You're not getting me. Not today. Did you find your way back up? Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. Yay! Proven frames! <laughs> Thank you, Grum. You're welcome. So um, those apiaries, kind of... those apiaries, by the way, occasionally will trade logs for apiaries. Yeah, I saw 24 normal logs for an apiary. Not you that have... one, though. I saw it on the previous map. Yeah, so I have it... a skeleton spawner and a zombie spawner here. It like, looks like I failed already. I, well, I need keep the zombie one and just any zombies you find suck up in there. For a uh, copper. Ah, no. I... Um, you know, I have a zombie spawner know. as well, right? So we could just pass these soul shards around until we have a tier 5 zombie spawner or whatever. What well, I think then... I need is a couple of zombie spawners in general. <laughs> but I haven't gotten my portal set up yet. Or I don't have a... Uh... Actually, I should be able to fly with my gravity gun, right? And holding the item? Nope. Wait, yeah, you should be able to. I have to gravity, yeah. so I should be able to. Oh. Yeah, you should be able to. You stupid bees, stop giving me what I don't want. You know what I want? Which is? Uh, they keep giving me industrious drones and diligent princesses, and what I need is an, indilig an industrious princess um, so that I can fi start breeding the industrious bees. I've got the imperial line now, so I can start making the imperial bees. User joined your channel. Um, Yo, right, but the, now, they, uh, they, the stupid things keep giving me the diligent um, princesses, which doesn't do me any good. Really? I need the industrious princesses. Right, so can you explain a bit about the whole princesses and the breeding stuff? Because I don't really understand how I could get the traits I want. Laura! The details! The details, please! Okay. Uh oh. Hey, girl. the bee queen. I've I've been walking it through the very basics, um, but the 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 exact genetical thing is more okay. your line. Okay, Grom, do you have a piece of paper? Give me a second. In real life. Yes, yes, give me a second. <laughs> okay. What do I use aluminium yes. for? Okay. Now on this piece of paper, I want you to draw a big square. It's a scrap paper, so that's easy. Okay. Sure, that works. Um, now, split the square into quarters. So draw a line straight down the middle one way and straight down the middle oh. the other way. Okay? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. So, obsidian. give me an example of, like, traits you want to mix together. Like, give me traits from two Bs. I have absolutely no idea how trades work, so... <laughs> okay, you have I don't a Bealizer? Which... Uh, yeah, me, I'm sorry. I, I walked him through Bealizer, Frames, Apiary, um, and getting the first batch common and cultivated. Okay. When you put a bee in an Apiary, er, not an Apiary, a Bealizer, there's traits here. under active and there's traits under inactive. Yeah, let me get myself a bee that I already did. Because you don't have to pay again with the wax if you already did it once, right? Right. 
Is that actually useful to ever look at drones? Jaded, I do it in my head too, but for new people, it's really easy if you look yeah, at no, it. No, 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 what I meant is I can't do it on paper. <laughs> it makes oh. no sense to me on paper. The thing is, is I, I actually took genetics in high school, so we had to make them and stuff, so like I know how to do it on paper, I just do it in my head. Yeah, see, like, I, I, I did it. I draw a square in my head. Yeah, see, I did it with the, the college for the lab tests, but they always let me skip the paperwork because the numbers and the genetics always got jumbled in my head as soon as I tried to put it on paper. Okay, okay. I think I... Right. Fixed. Uh... Okay, so give me, like, that bee that you're looking at, you know, what? pick one of its traits, so, like, temperature tolerance or humidity tolerance or even like what flowers they take what their lifespan is like pick one of those traits and tell me what the two things are right so this is in the first uh slot right in the bli uh first or second slot right some traits dropped, in the second slot too i dropped in a common princess and the only thing that seems special here is that it has an uh, in red nocturnal on the uh, item itself. Uh, okay. Let's see. Ah. Uh, right. right. So, so like, for nocturnal, right? Hang on, uh, guy. It should say yes or no under inactive and under active. So what does it say under active? I, um, oh yeah, uh, it has active uh, yes and inactive now. Okay. What color is act? It, what color is the yes? Blue. Okay, and blue no means that it's recessive, okay? Uh, I have to... Okay, so it's a, it's a 50% chance to get this right, but recessive means that it is... Hold on, alright, you're will... getting ahead of yourself, right? Okay. okay, so you know that square we had you draw earlier? Mm hmm Okay, so on one side of the square, draw a... Um, at the top, like basically... I'm trying to figure out what it is. Like across the columns, on the top of one column, write a lowercase y. And then no is pink, right? No, the no is blue. Yes and no are both recessive? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. And then on the other column, write a lowercase n. Also the top, right? Yes, next to the lowercase y, like those two columns. I think I make my square too big. <laughs> Maybe. Well, it's whatever. So basically, that represents the bee that you're holding right now. Alright? So, find another bee. Uh, it has to be... Well, what does it have to be? Because this is a common princess. Is that? It can be <laughs> anything. I'm just showing you how the genes work. Right, so I'll take a... Uh, I don't know. Don't combine them, just beelize it. Yeah, let me get some new bee from here. I, uh, Marshy Princess. Let's look at that. And, well, no, like, deal with a bee that you would combine with it. So if that first bee was a princess, find a drone. Ah, okay. I got a hundred rocky drones. <laughs> right, so... Mm. Oh, they do the whole batch at once for the for the drones. That's if, nice. If it's a stack, yeah. Yep. Right. So let's find this one. This is nocturnal, yes, and both inactive and active, and both blue as well. Okay. So on the other side, um, going um, like as a header for the rows, right? Two lowercase y's. Okay. All right. Now, basically, um, if there's a Y on for the four boxes, if there's a Y on the left of it, like basically take the letters that are the headers and put them across the rows and the columns. So, like where there's a Y on top and a Y on the left in the box, you would do Y Y. Okay. Okay. So you should get. A YY, a YN, a, another YY, and another YN. Yep, got it. So basically what that tells you that if uh, you breed these two bees together, 
that there's a 50% chance that it'll be pure nocturnal, like it'll be nocturnal, nocturnal, and there's a 50% chance that it'll be nocturnal and not nocturnal. Now, if, yeah. if the system picks the nocturnal and not nocturnal, then within that, there's a 50% chance that the nocturnal will be active. Versus, we'll check out the you know, the no a... being active. Because the active a... is what actually the bead does. I'm gonna go find a good spot. In right, so this has a 25% chance of becoming nocturnal, yes, if I combine these. It has a 50% chance. So, oh, of course, because no, it's more than 50% then, right? So, it, so no, if it no, picks well, one the of the thing is, is it's 50% to be nocturnal on both genes. Which is good because if you breed it with another bee that's nocturnal <laughs> in both genes, you're guaranteed to get nocturnals. This isn't a good spawn. But yes, it's slightly more percent. It's might slightly more than fifty percent that the bee you'll get will work at night. That's quite complicated. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's why I told you, um, while I've got some of the bees that would help get you started, I can't give them to you because uh, the whole breeding out the parts you wouldn't want will take way too long when you're starting. Flora could do it. Benny could probably do it. I'm willing to bet. I know some gear could manage it. Yeah, like basically most people just can't pay attention to the species and that's all they look at. Um, when you get into the nitty gritty of breeding for certain characteristics in bees, it gets a little more complicated. But, um, so but for the, uh, for the blue species and, and well, stuff, right? like, say you do that Punnett Square thing, and one of the genes is dominant, you would then use a capital letter. And basically how it works is if, like, say you have a capital letter and a non-capital letter in one of those boxes, what that means is if that combination is picked, the capital letter will always be active. Always. Okay. So that's how you can remove traits, apparently. That much of the alpha. Yeah. Or, or like if you're trying to get, you know, a, um, you know, a recessive species to become a dominant species or um, trying to get dominant out of a recessive species, it's always better to use more recessives. So what is the benefit of, of what you said last, that removing the dominance from a species? Well, you can't like remove dominance, but like say you have a diligent cultivated, you know, if you breed that, um, the cultivated is, you know, more likely to be active because it's dominant. So, like, you'd want to breed it with something else that's recessive. I don't know. It's complicated. Very no complicated. Words. It indeed is. But this is for all the trades over the whole bee, and it's like many lots yeah. of them. Yeah, and, and, and you're, not you're, all the traits. Uh, to uh, my suggestion, I don't know if Flora would agree. Would be while starting out, don't concentrate so much on trying to change things like nocturnal, what flowers they like, etc. Concentrate on getting the bee lines you want. Yeah, um, concentrating on getting the bee lines you want and the products you want. Yeah. I mean, maybe the other gene that, that I would think about looking at would be effect, because some bees have bad effects and you can pick them out. But if you don't want to, you don't have to look at that. The important thing to remember, there's like three important things with bee things that you remember. The queen will always be the same as the princess. Number one. Dang it. Mm -hmm. um, people don't seem to get that a lot. Don't know why. Um, that I kind of understood for the first set of bees. <laughs> number two. You you missed it. He was squealing over getting his first common bee. It was so cute. Aww. Oh, that was okay, no number two. Bee. Temperature and humidity are linked with the species. There's no way to change 
you know, what the temperature and humidity is for a given species. All cultivated will be normal, normal. All modest will be hot, arid. The way you work around that is with temperature tolerance, but you cannot actually change the temperature and the humidity that is linked to whatever species. Right, so I think I should start work on that because I want to have all sorts of bees on my land. And that's a certain right. biome, so... And you would work... You would do that by working with tolerances. Yeah. I haven't and, found those yet. What are those? Um, <laughs> let me think. What was the third thing? Hold on. Um... I can't remember what the third thing was. Don't ask me. Oh, okay. I, I see the term for tolerance. Um, for this stone, for this rocky drone, it seems to be two. Yeah, both two. Oh, okay. The third thing. Know your temperature and humidities. I knew it was related to the second thing. <laughs> so, humidities, there are three options. Okay? There is normal. There is uh, arid, which if you are looking at the arrows, there's normal. Arid is one down. Okay, that's... Really and working. there is damp, which is one up. And then for temperature, there is normal. Uh, there is one down from normal, which is cold. There is two down from normal, which is icy. There is one up from normal, which is warm. Two up from normal, which is hot. And three up from normal, which is hellish. Now, right. I don't know if Benny <laughs> ever fixed the three up being able to happen in the acclimatizer but in regular vanilla forestry terms there is no way to get three up what on wait, a beach. you just said acclimatizer yes. okay i just ended up with a very oddball glitch in the bees there, there is a machine called a the acclimatizer that benny wrote basically you can change tolerances of bees oh okay with a lot of power and a lot of materials. Like sand or lava or stuff. What happened, Jaden? Well, so I, I broke an apiarist's chest because I was swapping to an indexer. Mm -hmm. um, and it had bees in it. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Uh, because I wouldn't have had an apiarist's chest without it. Mm -hmm. um, and I had an apiarist backpack in my thing. Uh huh. I now have several, I have like a stack of 64 unweary drones. I only had 10 unweary drones. I have a stack of 64 Meadows drones. I only had about five of those. Make sure you read log this isn't some sort of I know thing. I've heard of a bug of quote unquote duping with the chest and the backpack, but when you try to take them out or use them or something, they disappear. Okay. I so, so it will that. probably yeah, so it, out, it will probably out. repair itself. Probably. Well, it, Dang it. Just read log so the inventory gets sent to you again and it will be proper. It's just a desync between the server and the client most likely. Right, so I have um, Nope. Vinny, are you still... on the server right now? Yeah. It's still showing I've got 64 Meadows Forest hybrids and 64 Unknown Unweary hybrids. Did you take them out? Of the thing? No, not yet. Of the backpack. Well, no, they're in the indexer now. Take them out of the indexer? And then log out? I don't know. Why don't uh... just throw them on the floor and pick them up again? Okay, I can do that. I need to okay. cut some flowers here. So flowers also matter. They like different kinds of flowers. I saw some apiaries with all kinds of funny colored flowers. Yeah. Basically, um, bee, like certain bees, when you take them out of the hive or when they first mutate, want certain flowers. But you can change those. Those are genes like anything else that you can change. Um, and, and they will um, spread flowers around depending on well, what kind of bee they are, what kind of... Uh, flower they want like bees that want cactus won't spread cactus around but they'll grow cactus um, um bees nope. that like flowers will if there's you know area nearby that flowers can be put on random uh, flowers will pop up no and it's yeah, spreading. i actually got a uh what, what do you mean? Mean? <laughs> spreading 
<laughs> I, I mean, previously I had a stack of 64 each of the Meadows Forest and the Unweary whatever. I took them out. I tried throwing them on the ground. I tried logging out. I tried all sorts of different things. Nothing. Now I have a, those two are both still stacked of 64, and I have a stack of 58 cultivated diligence. A jaded bug. A classic. So, um, yeah, um, I'm just going to walk away from this and hope it fixes itself eventually. <laughs> anyway, Grum, there's an apiarist chest in your in your ender chest now for you. Hold on to those, mm. though, so in case Sangir can cool. mess around with them and see what's going on. Okay, if they if they stick around, sure. I'm, I'm hoping they just reset themselves normally. They aren't anything that I was planning to breed anytime soon unless you guys really wanted unweary bees. I mean, we can get those ourselves. God. Well, yes, I know you can. I just figured if you wanted them, I have a lot of oddball mixes. Oh, that holds a lot of uh, stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured with as many bees as you said you had, you might like to have that. Yeah, I kind of need to transfer since, them now somehow. <laughs> but yeah, since, Minnie, I was working on the magic corridor of our house yesterday. So don't break it. I have an it. enchanting room set up. And I'm going to make some... a thumb crafty stuff. Get some Nava I yeah. still need to do that. That's so much work. It's like we're working on that, and the only machine we have is a pulverizer. Do I have oh, any? yeah! Well, you don't need so much for thumb craft at all, actually. I know, that's kind of why I'm like, <laughs> I want to go do that thumb craft stuff. Thumb craft's shiny. It is, it looks wonderful. And we have a lot of materials because I have this awesome habit of going mining and mining and mining and mining and mining and then I'm like, oh shit, I'm like 300 blocks away from my base. Maybe I should go back and get more torches. Alright guys, this is my setup for an automated lava pumping system. Just as I put a timer here on the filter, put some cans in here and the cans will automatically go inside here. Oh, hang on, the filter's jammed. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, just gotta get one can off. And my filter... Put in a can there. And I can actually, and I can actually disconnect due to a crash. Server side. Twice. Hmm, this is a bit weird. Um, let's try some. Oh, there we go. Five seconds sounds good. Okay, so like, once the can is. Where are my cans? Okay, I got one there. And... Somewhere. Okay, I lost the other two cans I had, but I've got 10 lava cans here. 11. And so, once that I, I have cans in here, it will be pumped up by the filter. You go in here and fill up. And the lava will be placed in here, which it then comes out to here, which the rate output slot goes to the relay, the relay will pump it back in here, and there uh, I have lava cans in my ender chest. And you see the pump here is automatically going to fill up both the liquid transposer and the magmatic engine. And the magmatic engine is going to provide power to both the pump and the liquid transposer. I'll be right back real quick when I set up the exact same thing on the overworld. Alright guys, this is my overworld setup. And then directly above the liquid transposer, there's a valve, so the ender chest pulls out the lava cans using the filter. It places them in here. Once the lava gets out, it gets placed into the tank. And then the empty can gets into the relay, pumps it back out here. I'm not too sure about this yet. I'll just leave it to experiment first. I had to manually put the lava cans in here to get the magmatic engine to power. So, uh, hopefully, I managed to get the 
lava cans I mean the Riku transposer to output into the engine at the same time if not I'll be putting the uh, engine on to the back here you no know, just rotate it around make uh, put two redstone conduits just to power the magnetic engine anyway that's it for this episode thanks for watching until next time Right, just an extra note, I added a spot where they're both here and the nether and I rotated the engine because the magma the lava wasn't going in. Alright, once again, see you next time.